It's the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and for the final time this year, unfortunately, our next guest has some bad news for us out of Hume Netball. Uh, Carla Fletcher joins us on the line, and Carla, uh, there won't be a final series, unfortunately. Uh, you must be disappointed, but at the same time, probably relieved as well, I guess. Yeah, hi, Jason. How are you? Um, yeah, look, um, the last few weeks have been really um, tough, but for everybody, um, but yeah, we came to the decision last weekend that um, yeah, we'd abandon our final series, which is really disappointing. I know some clubs are really, um, you know, upset and disappointed. They worked really hard all year, and um, unfortunately, we just couldn't make it happen. Yep. Yeah, no fault of uh, of anyone involved in uh, the association. Of course, it is what it is. No fault of anyone's really. It's just uh, the public health orders just uh, simply don't allow you to get the season finished by. I think it was October third was the date that you uh, that you'd set to have the season finished by. Is that right? Yes, October the third. But then you know the announcement today coming out of Albury with um, also going into a seven day lockdown. You know, yeah, it would have. You know, had we got started, it would have just made it impossible. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. actually even finish it. Yeah, sure. Um, have have uh, the association or has the association made any decisions yet about uh, whether or not? Uh, there'll be trophies handed out for the year, or uh, will you declare premiers, or uh, will you null and void the premier? Has any of those sort of decisions been made yet? No, we haven't made any decisions, but I'm sure um, you know the Hume Football Netball League board will um, gather all the clubs together and come up with an outcome. But you know, it would be really good to um, acknowledge those West and Ferris winners and club championships, and mm. you know our rising stars because you know they did play, and, and you know we got most of our games played. So that, yeah, then we know what we're um, able to do. Well, uh, there's plenty of time for that. But uh, for now, being that it's the last time we'll talk uh, this year, let's go through each grade and just uh, recognise the minor premiers as they finished in position. And we'll start with the little babies, the under-11s, who uh, it was Holbrook, who only lost the one game for the year. Uh, they had 15 wins and one loss and only conceded 90 goals for the year, if you don't mind, with a very, very strong percentage. So they had a really good season, the little babies. Yeah, they did. And this was our first year of having the 11 and under. So we were really quite excited and um, all the clubs were really happy that we um, included them in our um, competition this year. So I'm pretty sure we'll keep going next year with the um, 11. Uh, yeah, and Hope did a fantastic job. Hope was fairly strong in um, the junior junior grade. So well done to them for finishing on top of the ladder. That's right. Now, there were 12 clubs in the 13 and under competition and can I say every one of them had a win? Um, Brock Burham were undefeated for the season. I think the only undefeated team in Hume Netball. So, what an achievement from them! Yeah, the, the girls over at um, Brock Burham they're really pleased with how their um, 13s went this year, and Burham are pretty strong in some of their junior teams as well. So, I'm sure they'll be back next year. No doubt. Uh, top spot shared around throughout these competitions in the juniors. CDHBU were top of the pile in the 15 and under age bracket. They had 14 wins and two losses for the year. Everyone having at least one win and uh, everyone having a loss in this comp. It was fairly even. Yeah, I think so. Fairly even from more clubs. Um, and once again, you know, it's nice um, that all the clubs can be represented this year in the finals. We haven't had that for a while. So um, well done to CDHBU and getting their um, juniors in. Yep. In the 15th. Um, in the 17 and under, it was the Billabong Crows in the end on top, uh, only on percentage from Osborne. They both had records of 15 and 1. So the Billabong Crows claimed the minor premiership there. Uh, yeah, look, um, I think the 17th would have been an awesome final series. Um, both, both teams, Crows and Osborne, um, very competitive. Um, and and Crows have been um, up there for the last few years as well as um, Osborne. So it, that would have been a, a cracking game coming into the you know the second week of finals. But um, unfortunately, it's not to be. So, um, you know, I'm sure all those teams will be back again next year and working really hard to stay where they were this year. Uh, we'll quickly go through some of the senior grades and we'll finish with the A grades. So the C resis, uh, we had Jindera. 15-1, and one, claiming the minor premiership there. It was how long in the C grade with a record also of 15 wins 
and one loss. How long also in the B grade, and I should also mention Osborne here, both of them finished with a record of 15 wins, one loss for the year, and it was how long on percentage who claimed the minor premiership there by oh, around about 80 goals for in the end. So well done to how long. And in the A grade, uh, we talked about it all year long, but it was Osborne in the end who were minor premiers, only the one loss for the year. Uh, pretty strong percentage as well. Uh, Jindera and Lockhart rounded out the top three. They had both had records of 14 wins and two losses, but Osborne were clearly the best side for the most, uh, well, most of the year anyway. Yeah, I think um, the A-grade finals would have been absolutely amazing. And uh, in Osborne and Newton were probably looking favourites, but um, Jindera in that last game of the season, um, beating them, I think um, any of the top six, in the A grade could have um, challenged anyone on any day, depending on um, how they played. So it would have been an amazing, amazing finals. Unfortunately, we'll just um, have to wait for next year. Yeah, and I think um, all the clubs know what they've got to do. And I'm sure they're all going to be back bigger and stronger next year. No doubt. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to have a spell. Uh, it's been, uh, I know from, from management uh, in all competitions, it's been a tough season having to juggle COVID uh, regulations when you were playing and then trying to wait to find out what's going on with lockdowns and whatnot. I hope you get a chance to put your feet up, Carla, and have a bit of a rest over the uh, the summer months because I know you and your committee have, uh, have done it hard behind the behind the scenes trying to get all this sorted. Oh, they have, and, they've you know, they've been fantastic. They've um, worked really hard and they've been supportive and, you know, they picked you up when you needed to be picked up. Um, so a big thank you to all the committee and to all the clubs too. It's been really challenging. It's been a challenging year for everybody. So, um, you know, if we can get through this, we can get through um, anything and um, bring on 2022. Here, here, and uh, we look forward to talking more Hume Netball in 2022. For now, we'll leave it there, Carla. Thanks again for all of your input into the show this year and all the best with putting everything together for next season. Thanks, Jason. You take care too, and we'll see you um, in April, probably next year. Oh, talk to you anyway. <laughs>